Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Jack says, good afternoon. I wasn't going to make a video because I am having what I call a thoroughly lazy day. But, you know, sometimes on thoroughly lazy days, you've just got to do a little bit of sharing. So, the reason why I've come out, ah, there she flies off. One of the reasons is that the other day, I think it was last week when I was making a video, I was moaning a little bit about the lack of butterflies. And I said, oh, well, we had butterflies in the early spring, so maybe, you know, we'll get some in late August. Well, since then, there's been nothing but butterflies in the garden. Now, they do flit away fairly quickly, and I don't know if you can see them flying around here. I'm going to see if I can get one or two up close. They just seem to be having such a party at the moment, and it's lovely. Ah, there's one on the head of the Buddha. Oh, no, gone. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those butterfly parks. They're just flitting around everywhere. I'll just go over here and sort of stand still. And there we go, there's one. Can you see it? Uh, gone up there now. There we go, there's a shot. All over the Bootlia. Absolutely adore the Bootlia. <laughs> oh, it's just so joyful to see them. Just so joyful. Look at that beauty. So happy days, the butterflies are back. Because I was getting a wee bit concerned. Isn't it funny too? I, I, just, I just happened to mention it and it was as though the universe heard me and said, said to itself, oh, forgot all about those butterflies, must post them through immediately. <laughs> there was an enormous package of butterflies posted through the package split open and they all flew out round Beltona. Just so gorgeous. They're going up on the roof and everywhere. Oh. Now, with all this kale, I'm thinking to myself I should be making some juice. So I might start making juice later on. Have a kale and apple juice. Hmm. That should put a bit of fire into my step. Isn't she just gorgeous? Hmm? Look at that. A little work of art. The 
immense beauty in that. Look, she's posing. She's posing for the camera. She's saying, look at me. Look at the beauty. Look at the beauty. Look at her beautiful little face. You can see her little face so perfectly. Magic. What pure magic. Look at that. Wow. Just wow. Mm. I'm going to have to move my hand now because my arm's got sore holding the camera up. Let's see if I can do a little. She's staying very still. She doesn't seem to mind. She doesn't seem to mind me being here at all. She's quite placid. No, I don't think I'm getting a proper focus, so I'll take the focus out and just move the camera as close as I can to her. Beautiful. Wow. A lot of the boodley has actually gone over. You can see it's turned brown, but there's a fair few bits of white boodley are coming through. What I might do actually, um, today or tomorrow, is cut back some of the dead heads and um, see if I can't get a second flush, a proper second flush on this bush. Because now that the butterflies are here, you can see some of the little bees up there. The bees have certainly made the most of this anyway. And I'll give you a little update now on on the pumpkins. So I've got a lot of pumpkins happening here. Just gonna go quickly through some of them. There's a fairly big one coming up between Aquilegia. Um, the giant pumpkins haven't done too well. Uh, there's one just through there, you can see. No, it's not very giant. It's not growing very big. And there's a few on here. You can just see them as well. Um, and I have been taking off the growing tips. There's a few lying down there. This is the other giant pumpkin. This is a wee bit disappointing, but the other pumpkin plants, look look here, are doing really well. So there was two, two giant pumpkins in there and two normal sized ones. And uh, the normal sized ones are doing fine. There's another little one coming on there. There's another little one coming on there. A little cluster down there. So it's been an interesting experiment. Um, I'd say though, you know, giant pumpkins probably just do need a lot more extra uh, root space, you know. So, the mumbrishas come out there at the front of the cottage. And you can see through the front door that the back door is open. Can you see that? I'm just going to walk down this little path, one of the many little paths, and have a peek down, a peek down into the gardens. That's the only little bit of lawn left here. It gets smaller and smaller each year. As it should be. Just enough to spread out a rug and enjoy a cup of tea and perhaps read a book.
path that leads to the door. And then just, you can still see this year, anyway, probably next year you won't be able to see Kilrona Mountain. You can just see that little bit of Kilrona Mountain there. The trees have got very high. Now there's going to be a fair bit of coppicing going on this winter. There's a little bird through there. I um, already started some of the coppicing. Just show you. So for the first time ever at Beltona Cottage, I've had a little bit of help. Um, this is from a young couple who want to learn about permaculture. And uh, Anthony and Emer, so they've been down in the bog gardens cutting out some of the willow because the willow has got very profuse and abundant and um, it's time now to just coppice bits of it, not all of it. You know, so each clump of willow you take out maybe two or three bits. Um, so all this is going to be taken into the barn and jigsawed up into logs. I can do the jigsawing. Just walk around the back of the house. I put one of my um, one of my plants out here for a little bit of light and uh, a bit of rain because they get very dusty. So it's good to leave them outdoors for a week or so. Little Robin Redbreast there on the tree. Can you see it? Birds are very quiet now at this time of the year. A little bit noisy first thing in the morning. But over the course of the day they're fairly quiet. You can hear the cattle. The cattle in the fields around Belton Cottage. They make a fair bit of noise at this time of the year. This little tree's coming on well. Again, I'm not 100% sure of the name of this tree. Um, it was brought to me in a pot as a wee gift. So I've planted it in there and it seems to be thriving. I must find out the name of it. And this used to be a little pathway through here. But it just has spent, you know, year after year it's tried to close up. So this year I just said, OK, close up then. <laughs> you obviously don't want me walking through there. And there's plenty of pathways. Now there's a site. With the beautiful orange crocosmia. Kind of echoing the rusty orange of the bin. <laughs> Back to the butterfly garden. This is where they're they're happiest at the moment, I suppose, because this little bit um, catches the afternoon sun, and there's lots of flowers, nasturtiums, and celery flowers, poppies, astrantia. Put a little bit of crook. Um, Cosmos in there, look, and some antirhinum. There's the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, she's just so gorgeous. She is lovely. Oh, away she goes. 
They're so quick. So quick. Now, one last thing to show you. Well, there's thousands of things to show you here in the gardens, but I want to nip indoors now and upload this little video. And then I have to go over to the post office and do a little bit of posting. So I just want to show you the rose hips on the Rosa Ragosa. Aren't they lovely? Ah, oh, little bird, right on cue. Thank you. Oh, I love the bird song. It's beautiful. So, these beautiful rose hips. I'm going to leave you with this image. Isn't that lovely? There we go. That's Lunissa. Blessings, everyone.